Happy Hump Day and welcome into the PHNX Sun Devil Show. I'm Anthony Totry, joined yeah, as always, or at least as of lately, Sean DePaz. Yeah. Sean, we have a ton to get into today yeah, because, as you know, it is Wednesday. Yeah, it means is. we're going to get into the thick of talking Arizona State versus Fresno State yeah, at the we end are. of the show. We're going to be talking uh, some of the players, some of the schemes that Fresno State uh, likes to run and that maybe fans can expect to see against Arizona State. We're going to hear a little bit later uh, from Mikey Keene, the Fresno State quarterback, and then Jeff Tedford as well, the coach. They had their press conference early in the week, so we've got some sound from them that we will get to. But before we do all of that, we do have a guest from the Beware of Bulldogs podcast, Caleb Nail. Caleb, thanks so much for taking the time today, man. Oh, thanks for having me, guys. Sorry I didn't wear the cool shirt and the red. I'm I'm Bland brown. <laughs> next brown. time. That's what I next do. time. I'm yeah, a big neutral, neutral tone guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Caleb, obviously Fresno State starting the season two and zero. They just got finished with a, a double overtime game this past weekend. This is a team with the second longest active win streak in the FBS. Uh, just what have you made of this Fresno State team thus far? Uh, we're really happy here in Fresno. However, after a double overtime victory against Eastern Washington. <laughs> We're a little skeptical. You know, <laughs> we would like to see a little more consistency. We thought the defense would be a little better. We allowed Purdue 35 and 31 against Eastern Washington. Not what we're expecting. So, like you guys, you have new players, a lot of questions to be answered. Not really sure where your expectations should be. Now, get, we're coming into game three. We've seen you guys play twice. You've seen us play twice. I, I think now is the time where we start to have our questions answered. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, hopefully it's in our favor this weekend. So uh obviously, as far as offense is concerned with you guys, it kind of starts and starts with Mikey Keene, a guy that people here that, know, that if they've been paying attention to Arizona football might know, a, a Phoenix area native. Um uh, what what kind of quarterback are are should we expect to be to be seeing? How is he going to give ASU's defense fits? Yeah, I would recommend go watching the Purdue highlights. That's probably more what you're going to get. Uh, the playbook was pretty bland against Eastern Washington, but he's I would say he's similar he's similar build and similar style to Jake Hayner, what we had last year. I don't believe he has the arm that Jake Hayner had. Uh, he put a lot of air under the ball against Eastern Washington, allowing time for defenders to get there. Uh, now the decision making is coming along. You know, it, we have a new offensive coordinator. He's learning the playbook. He's still getting to know the wide receivers. I'm, I'm hoping, and you can see he's learning and trying to take advantage of what's given to him. But I, we're hoping for quicker decisions, hitting wide receivers right out of their break. Uh, because he's been a second late. Uh, so he can move. We haven't seen a whole lot. They ran a couple RPO stuff against Purdue. But you can expect a tough quarterback that I think is improving and learning the playbook. And uh, hopefully he puts has a little bit more zip on the ball Saturday than he did last week. Yeah, for all the ASU fans, it feels like just getting a look at, at Mikey Keene, just watching his tape a little bit, he is somewhere in between Trenton Bourget and Drew Pine, uh, just in terms of play style. He's an efficient quarterback. Uh, it, clearly, he he's helping the Fresno State offense put up 36.5 points per game. Outside of Keene, how is this team finding ways to score that many points? Is it is it more the offense, or is it more the defenses that they're going up against? <laughs> Well, that's a really good question. Uh, I, I think it's the offense. I would say it's the offense. The passing game has been our savior. And the only problem is we have about two weapons mm -hmm. in the passing game. That's our tight end, Trey Watson. I think he's an absolute stud. Uh, he's open most of the time when you watch him play. Eric Brooks is another is our wide receiver. He had a big game against Purdue. Uh, it took him some time to get going against Eastern Washington, but he's a threat. But other than that, our wide receiver core is pretty small. We are quick, but we're small. Yeah. And so we rely on good route running and speed. And I think that's why it's taken Mikey some time to get used to those things. Uh, when it comes to offensively in the running game, uh, we have a big back, Elijah Gilliam. Didn't do much against Eastern Washington. So we're really relying on our passing game and 
because Mikey hasn't been consistent throwing the deep ball, I would say kind of similar to Rashada, uh, you know, our short intermediate passing game is really what's moving the ball and scoring points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you, you bring up a receiver like Eric Brooks. Uh, I believe he's listed at like 5'7", uh, which is a little bit smaller for, for uh, a guy at this caliber, but it, he reminds me a lot of what ASU just faced in a guy from Oklahoma State, Brennan Presley, that they kind of move all over the field. Uh, he's their their speed guy that can kind of do it all. Uh, just from that perspective, how does Fresno State use him? Do they use him in a traditional way, or do they like to mess around with, with uh, him on offense? They use him, well, they'll move him outside and in the slot. The guy you're going to want to keep an eye on is Jalen Gill. Mm -hmm. They will use Jalen Gill in the backfield. He, He's another wide receiver that's under six feet. We'll put yeah. it that way. And we have three of them on our two deep and <laughs> that are starting. But anyways, so Jalen Gill is the guy you want to keep an eye on. They'll move him around, do different things with him. And uh, and then the other wide receiver is Mac Delena, short guy, um, who most of the time is going deep. So he's speedy. but mm -hmm. But... Keep an eye on Jalen Gill. Eric Brooks is your more traditional slot wide receiver. Yeah. And then uh, the like, other side of the ball, defense. We talk a lot about the offense. Um, ASU hasn't necessarily been up against the toughest defenses, but also hasn't really done much against those defenses. Uh, what what should we be looking for for your defense from the Fresno State defense? Well, Okay, what I expect is, and what I would like to see, is a lot of pressure on Rashada. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now that that could be completely different from what we get. Uh, our linebacker room is so deep. I would say probably one of the deepest in the country. We also have two corners in Cam Lockridge, who only played half a game against Eastern Washington, but Cam Lockridge and Carlton Johnson, who are ranked at the top in the Mountain West. Uh, so I really like our cornerbacks. The question mark becomes, uh, can the D line? get pressure we do have uh one guy johnny hot johnny hudson who's beat up a little bit he didn't practice this week but he didn't leave eastern washington with an injury so i'm i think it's just precautionary and he's just sitting out this week in practice but then the biggest question mark is at the safety position so you have dean clark who's a stud safety transfer from kent state but the other safety position has been inconsistent i would say we've had three guys coming in and out getting lots of reps in the past two games and we've been getting beat deep i mean eastern washington had guys running free deep and uh, if rashada and your boys in the wide receiver room can take advantage of that i'm i'm a little worried we have a segment called gonna make you sweat and that's what's making me sweat if we can't guard one-on-one -on -one and our safeties or our safeties are getting beat deep you know i think there's a possibility there that uh, Arizona could take advantage of that. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see because obviously that's been a, a big topic of conversation here is them being a little conservative and not really being aggressive attacking downfield. So it'll be interesting. And then also our offensive line has been is pretty <laughs> beat up in their own right. So that, that battle in the trenches is going to be pretty interesting as well. Well, that's going to be interesting because, I mean, you, you bring up Fresno State and the idea that you want to see them kind of get pressure Correct me if I'm wrong here, but they only have one sack so far through these first two games. Uh, just been unable to actually get these quarterbacks moving around. Yeah, yeah, it's been frustrating to say the least. We, we, and we were talking about it on our game preview. Is does Fresno State blitz and create the opportunity for Rashada to roll out and run because he's a good runner. I've mm -hmm. I've seen mm -hmm. him run a couple times. He can do it. Or do we? you know, not blitz and contain, which we, I don't want to see that. I'd like to see us bring pressure. And then by bringing pressure, are we getting beat deep? So, you know, there's so many question marks on this defense. We, our expectations were top 25 in the country because we ended the season so well last year. Almost all of our returning returners are coming back or that's repetitive, but you know what I mean? Other than Evan Williams, who's at Oregon now, but we don't speak yeah. that name here. <laughs> so, you know, it's 35 and a half points a game is not what we are expecting. Uh, we're looking to turn it around this week and in the future. Yeah, I, I am interested because you, you look at this win streak and, and Kenny Dillingham has brought it up earlier in the week, obviously second behind only Georgia. Uh, this win streak goes back, obviously, to last season when Fresno State finished the year with a dominant win uh, over Washington State, which is 
funny because Washington State's defensive coordinator is now Arizona State's defensive coordinator, uh, and it didn't look like Fresno State had any issues dealing with that hmm. defense last year. What from that bowl game uh, kind of, I guess, gives you confidence, or I guess what worked well in that bowl game uh, to kind of beat a Brian Ward defense that revolves around getting the quarterback off balance and then just chaos? Yeah, I mean, so we're talking offensively here, yes? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, so in that game, Jordan Mims, who's now on the practice squad with the Saints, he had a huge game against Washington State running on the ground. And that's what I love to see. Fresno State, you know, if you talk to the older guys, Fresno State is known as smash mouth football, mm -hmm. anybody, anytime, anywhere. And I'd like to see that. Elijah Gilliam is a big back. He likes to bang. And if we can establish that, I believe that that will open up our short intermediate passing game, which I have seen Arizona State to be susceptible to against yeah. Oklahoma State. But I would love to play smash mouth football with our big running back, which I know you guys have a, a big running back that I like yeah. a lot. Uh, but if I did not know he was the D DC at Washington State, but because Jordan Mims was so successful, shoot, let's run the ball, man. Yeah. I right. mean, that, that'll be interesting because yeah. at least in the first half of games, and Sean, you can speak to it, this Arizona State defense has been pretty resilient yeah. uh, in, in terms of shutting down opposing run games. And then you get to the second half of games, yeah. and then it it's a little a lot bit more like last year where the, they, they were not great. I mean, yeah, run. it's just going to depend, I think, on what ASU uh, offense you get. I think that's where the game's going to be won because you yeah. look at both these teams. Fresno State offensively seems like they're finding a way to click. Uh, ASU defensively feels kind of the same, even though on paper uh, it doesn't necessarily look that way, especially that Oklahoma State uh, box score. It's a, a leaned, I guess, a certain way. Uh, but ASU's offense has been a little shaky. Fresno State's defense has been a little shaky. Before we get you out of here, uh, two things. First off, is there any major injury concerns for Fresno State going into this game? And then we can wrap things up uh, with your prediction for Saturday's game. Oh, boy. Well, when it comes to injuries, we just have Johnny Hudson on the D-line who is a little banged up sitting out of practice, but I think he's going to be a go. And then Malik Sherrod, who's listed as number one running back, he's been sitting out of practice. He was in practice with a boot, actually. Um, not, We're not sure what's wrong. No one said anything. But um, he started the season as a number one, but Elijah Gilliam quickly took over against Purdue. And by the way, Elijah Gilliam's a walk-on. Uh, so... <sighs> I, I still don't think we see Sherrod, but I'm happy with our running back situation. Mm -hmm. But I should say, our who started out number three, Devin Rivers, younger brother of Ronnie Rivers, who's with the Rams, he also had a shoulder injury, uh, but he's feeling close to 100%. So it'll be interesting to see who takes backup reps at the running back position on Saturday. But other than that, uh, we should be good to go. We're healthy. Mikey King's ready. And, the, and my prayer is that the O-line can hold up. So, that's our, yeah, our that's suit. ours as well Caleb that's ours as well any <laughs> predictions uh for Saturday's game well I know th what is it? the the spread is at minus three to the dogs right now yeah and I mean I'm, I'm happy to see that but that's tough especially for an away game for us mm -hmm. and with so many question marks for both teams I'm, I'm gonna take the dogs I'm gonna take the dogs in this one and my prediction earlier and you may not like this. Well, you won't like this. I've had 35 28. 35 and that was my 28. Prediction. Okay. Maybe it was 21. I mean, but since if I'm our on show, offense can score, if our offense can score four touchdowns, <laughs> that'd be nice. I'll take it. I'll that'd take nice. that at the very least. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, no pun intended. It is going to be an absolute dogfight, mm. I think, on Saturday. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, but. Caleb, re regardless, thank you so much for for coming on and, and kind of giving us a little bit uh, of a backstory as to what this Fresno State season has looked like thus far. Oh, thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. And cool setup, by the way. I really like it. <laughs> Appreciate thank you, it. Caleb. Thank you. Anytime, man. Anytime. Uh, Sean, so a lot, a lot to break down yeah. just with that conversation. And obviously, we've got some sound as well uh, from Fresno State's coach and quarterback. But what stands out to you? Just from what we heard uh, from Caleb, obviously a guy who's around this team uh, pretty consistently. Yeah, I mean it's it's the defense, and it's specifically him mentioning their propensity to be beaten over the top. Yeah, uh, I think that is something that ASU fans over the last two weeks have been desperate to see more of is, is them attack downfield. So it will be really interesting to see if they do try and, and attack downfield, attack those safeties. Um, 
and then again, the the the, the battle in the trenches, a beat up D line versus a beat up O line. Um, ASU's offensive line needs to be better, um, and there's some guys who are going to need to step up. So it'll be really interesting. I, I mean, that's you could probably say that for every single game this year, but really to see how they they what they can accomplish in the trenches, specifically offensively. Yeah, no, absolutely, and I think I think it's interesting that he he brings up the the idea that he wants to see Fresno State be able to force a little bit of pressure. We know Arizona yeah. State's offensive line is significantly banged up without their starting right tackle for the season, and then some injuries uh, across that offensive line. And then you look at a Fresno State defensive front that has been pretty beaten up. I know they're two and zero, but they're just. Defensively, they're such a middle of the pack team in the Mountain West from that defensive side of the ball that I think it really is going to come down to that battle in the trenches. And, you know, we could say that every single week. Yeah. Uh, but for the majority of the season, it might come down to if Arizona State's offensive line uh, can hold up. It, it's certainly going to be interesting. And I think with some of the information that we have, uh, yeah, I think it is. Be it's, real interesting. it's gonna be real real interesting guys we're gonna continue the conversation here uh but first want to tell you guys a little bit about four peaks sean we are almost in the middle of september did you that know that is mm, that part is unsettling week three of college football that's week two of the, of the nfl it's crazy it is absolutely that's, crazy no that sense. that's where we're at already in the season guys regardless if you don't have a place to watch Arizona State versus Fresno State. Maybe head out to the Four Peaks 8th Street Pub. They got all the TVs you can imagine for that college football, uh, that game day experience. And then, not to mention, they've got phenomenal food and even better drinks. Sean, you get excited about it every day, and I expect nothing less. It is officially pumpkin porter season, guys. Get in the fall state Turn of mind up! with notes of nutmeg, allspice, and toasted pie crust back on the shelves and in draft lines throughout the the Valley. Check it out. It is so damn good. And it's definitely going to get you through till we get to October, till we get to yeah. November, till we get to those months where you really get to dig in to some of that good stuff. Mm. Guys, visit fourpeaks.com slash locator to find all your favorite brewery tours and events. Stein holding Oktoberfest and haunted brewery tours are oh, right yeah, the go- around the ghost make the, the corner. Beer. The ghost make the beer? Apparently. That's great. That's what Derek told me. And Derek is the So authority. do you see the ghost make the beer? Or is it just like the beer is being... I don't know. Mm, interesting. Though, so. Guess we'll have to check it out. Yeah. Guys, check out Four Peaks Brew or at Four Peaks Pub to keep up with the latest at Arizona's hometown brewery. You do got to be 21 or older to drink Four Peaks. And please drink responsibly. And if you're 21, there's, you know, as long as you're doing it responsibly, there's no reason you can't you know, indulge in, in Four Peaks and our friends over at OG's. Um, because the people at OGs have something for everybody. Yeah, they do. They got micro doses. So if you just want some, you know, a little light, you hit one of those. They got, you know, Happy Balance CBD. They got the Sleepy Time. They got Indica Sativas. They got p- bags of their creams, bags of their fruits, all mixed together. So they got anything you could want. Strawberries and cream flavor goes stupid. It's insane. Orange creamsicle goes insane. I want an actual orange creamsicle right now, though. That like was, an that ice sounds, cream? That sounds delicious. I've never had like an orange creamsicle. Are you serious? Yeah. I like lived on those when I was a kid. Like that was my, that's why I like, I, that is, is no lies. Like orange creamsicles were like one of my things growing up. Like you got asked my mom. Like, really? So that's why I was so hyped when we had OGs and they had an orange creamsicle flavor and it tasted like orange creamsicles. Well, if it's, you if you guys were here yesterday and we got into the OGs conversation, Day two was a success. I mm. watched the third episode of Predators mm. on some OGs. The Puma, the Puma episode was Ooh, phenomenal, no, no, and it no. was voiced by Tom Hardy. Yeah, that's <laughs> it hard. was crazy. That's hard. It that's was hard. crazy. That's hard. Um, <laughs> it, yeah, that is hard. But finding OGs <laughs> isn't hard. All you got to do um, is head over to their website, ogsbrands.com, or find them on social at ogsbrands. As always, um, you must be 21 or older, and you must enjoy responsibly. Absolutely. All right, let's go ahead and continue uh, the conversation about ASU versus Fresno State. It's in it's in the headline. Is it a must-win game for the Sun Devils? My answer to that question is kind of. Yeah, I mean, must win for what? I think for Kenny in the offense. Yeah, like I mean, they need to turn out a good performance or else I think there's a there's a chance that things start getting ugly in Tempe. Um, not because they should, but because, I mean, that's how fans operate. Well, that and you got USC. Yeah. And then it's right going to get that. real ugly. Right. Um, so like, yeah, it is in that sense. I mean, obviously they're not playing for bowl eligibility or anything like that. Yeah. So no game is a must win in that regard. Um, but I, I just think from an optics perspective, like I get that Fresno state is a good team and they are, you know, they, um, they had dreams of being in the top 25, all that. 
but from an optus perspective, you're a power five school. They're not like you need to go take care of that business. Um, so yeah, I, I, I agree that it's, it is kind of in certain respects, it is a must win, but I mean, in a certain respect, it, what happens, the result ultimately doesn't matter. What's most important is them like playing good football. If they lose this game, but the offense show, has shows like signs of life and it's encouraging them in that regard, then like it, I can live with that. Yeah. Ultimately, because again, Fresno State is a good team. But if 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 they lose another game that they should have won because they were being boring play calling or whatever whatever reasons you want to pick from last week, then then that's a problem. Yeah, absolutely. You got to take care of business. You can't start your season. Uh, with three straight home games and drop two of them. Yeah, it just that, that's the other thing, right? You're going to come into the season talking about how you have eight home games and you lose two of the first three, then it's like, well... It just doesn't send a good message. It do- at all. It's not It's not a good start to the Dillingham era. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jeff Tedford, the head coach over at Fresno State. Kenny has talked about it, the culture that Tedford has kind of instilled over at Fresno State um, and, and just what it is about Bulldogs football that is kind of like Caleb said, it's... We are going to put our 11 guys versus your 11, and we are just going to play Smash Mouth. Yeah, it's funny. When you look win. at um, Keen's, like, bio on on the Fresno website, like, yeah. the personal area is, you know, from Chandler, son of Michael and Tanina. Interesting. Favorite athlete, LeBron James. Which, side note, boring as shit. <laughs> that's boring as shit. Don't, choose somebody that's not the greatest athlete Give me, of like, all Charlie time. Whitehurst. Like, if you're choosing LeBron, Kobe, or... Kobe's a little different because Kobe's the black mamba but even then if you're choosing lebron kobe or michael jordan as your favorite athlete be better be more creative yeah. anyways but it goes on to say um chose to attend fresno state because of the culture and the program and the resume coach tedford has with quarterbacks yeah like that's it is there again i i think people if you're not paying super close attention to mountain west football they hear fresno state and they're like huh this ain't your your grandpapa's Fresno State. Like this team is legit. It's a it's a legit program. They are absolutely. Tedford uh, had his weekly press conference at the start of the week where he talked all things, obviously Fresno State and Arizona State. This is uh, what Tedford had to say about the Sun Devils. Well, they're a very talented crew, no doubt about it. Um, they are big and physical and a lot of speed, and um, they do a really nice job and they're very well coached. So. Um, it's it's real it's the Washington State defense, right, that was one of the best defenses in the conference last year in, in their conference. And uh, so they have a lot of really good players, a lot of speed on the field, and their offensive line is big and physical and they as always they have speed outside. And uh, so, you know, pretty much all the way around they're a very gifted crew. Yeah, I think there's gonna be a lot of people uh that are going to be surprised by this Arizona State defense mm-hmm. this week specifically because uh, I think it, it really plays in their favor the way that Fresno State plays football. Uh, and I, I really like Trey Brown to have a big game. I like Will Schaefer, Tate Romney, yeah. some of those linebackers. Um, I just think they're in an opportune position to get, I don't want to say get back on track, but to like right the ship yeah. of what the season has been thus far. And I think it starts on the defensive side. Yeah, I mean, right, like... ASU fans are very reactionary. I don't know anything about that, but um, like, it, obviously, I think fans were pretty upset after the Oklahoma State game. Um, and yeah, I don't think there's uh, ultimately what happens in this game is not going to decide what happens in the, like the Kenny Dillingham tenure. It's not yeah. going to be decided by you know a, a non-conference game in his first season. But it is definitely like that. Going two and one into conference play is very different than going in one and two. It just, I don't think anyone's going into the USC game regardless. They could beat Fresno State by 83 points. And I don't think anyone's going into the USC game being like, we're the team to beat. Um, but it, it definitely, it's just, yeah, it, it's just, it's so much, it's such a different feeling and, and outlook. Like, I feel like Theons are going to have a very different perspective on uh, what this season is going to be, what Kenny Dillingham is going to be, fair or not depending on what happens in this third game here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Tedford obviously giving a lot of praise and hype to to Arizona State, but we know Fresno State is undefeated yeah, at that this was point. one thing. They talked about the offensive line. Like, they, 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 if, there's, if you're looking for things to compliment about this team, like the offensive line is not necessarily the top of the list. The, the, the top of the list. Like, that, the, he did say he talked about the speed on the outside, which is certainly the case, um, but... Well, look, there are a couple reasons why, and this is obviously getting ahead of 
myself in terms of prediction. Why I think this matchup favors Arizona State. Uh, and one of Just them, like every matchup. you'll see from, from what Tedford says, Fresno State needs to correct. Uh, so this is what Jeff Tedford says, that Fresno State uh, needs to kind of get right going into Arizona State. We can't have penalties. Uh, we always try to stay on schedule, and we had four holding calls in the game, and so you're not going to stay on schedule with holding calls. Um, we had a long drive in the first half that they did a nice job of, of converting on third down. They had a 21-play drive, uh, which I'm, I think the time of possession was 11 and a half to three and a half in the first quarter. Um, you know, so we have to get off the field. Um, but we, the, all the way around, in every phase of the game, there's always something we can improve on. And uh, so the, I don't think there's one thing that you can say, we have to do that. There's a lot of things we can do better, as there is each week. Every single week, it's the same thing. So this is, this right here, the penalties, the holding on the offensive line, why I think this matchup, at least in my opinion, favors Arizona State. Because you look at the Fresno State offensive line and their consistency when it comes to holding penalties when they get beat. You look at the pass rushers that Arizona State has and the kind of chaotic defensive scheme that they run. You look at guys like B.J. Green. You look at speed rushers like Clayton Smith, uh, Prince Dorba. Like mm -hmm. The rushers that Arizona State has, a lot of them utilize their speed. Yeah. Clayton Smith specifically. So when you get in those third and short or the, the third and mid-range and you send Clayton Smith, and maybe you send Trey uh, Trey Brown in the A-gap. Like These are things that I think Arizona State and Brian Ward are going to be able to put this Fresno offensive line, this Fresno State offensive line, in such a, a tough position to where it's like either Mikey has to get the ball out of his hand or yeah. there's going to be a holding call. And that, that's the big thing, whether it's it's from penalties or turnovers. Like This team is going to have I, – I feel like – Fresno State is going to give you opportunities that you can take advantage of, and yeah. you have to. Right? We saw Saturday. This was a team that was incapable of really even moving the ball past midfield. Well, hopefully in this game, you'll have some instances where you start with good field position, yeah. and you have to take advantage of that. I mean, um, Caleb mentioned the Mikey Keene, his you know maybe not lack of arm talent, but uh, his sometimes floating ball stuff like that, uh, being a second late on on things like. The defensive backs are going to have to take advantage of that, especially if the if the, the front seven is putting pressure on Keen and, and making him uncomfortable. Like you, you, you're going to have to take advantage of those opportunities. The offense is going to have to take the advantage of the opportunities that the defense inevitably or hopefully is going to be able to give them. Um, like I said, whether that is turnovers or, or through pressuring the other team into making penalties, because um, again, at the end of the day, this is a power five school. Like there is yeah. speed and athleticism on this team. Um, more so than you would probably find on average in the Mountain West. Um, so they're going to have to take advantage of that. And to answer Tony's question, uh, Fresno State is favored by three. And I love Arizona State at plus money. <laughs> yeah, I love Arizona State as a home dog. Yeah. Please. Especially in a game like this. Yeah. It's, trust me, get it while it's hot. Yeah. Trust, just, just. I know I've steered you wrong in the past. But this this game feels different, right? Like, it's not uh, Oklahoma State. There's, you know, it's a big opponent. There's They played them last year. This thing going on. First week is obviously weird. It's the season open, and then you have the rain delay. Like, you're coming into a game that no one really gives a shit about outside of Fresno and, and, and Tempe. Like, it's not. This isn't going to be Fox's big noon game. Wait, it's um, not. No, it's not. Damn. It's not. Um, like, it's not. You're not going to have. I. I I don't know. I have a hard time believing you're going to have the Fresno State fan turnout in the way that you have the Oklahoma State fan turnout. Like this is a game where you should. There's not going to be. There should be no distractions. Yeah. You know what you need to do. You got to go in and just handle business. Um, and oh, and I mean, granted, if the distractions were the reason they were losing the first two games, I know that's a hu a bigger issue. But still, like there, there's none but football here. Go play and go win. Yeah. You have to. I mean, we, we've talked a lot about Arizona State needing to force some turnovers and maybe give the offense. Yeah. Uh, a, a little bit, a few more opportunities. Mm -hmm. We know the the Arizona State offense uh, hasn't necessarily been great, specifically in that second half. They haven't necessarily been great in, in third and short, fourth and short. Uh, we'll obviously see what transpires. Obviously, freshman quarterback uh, Jaden Rashada still uh, at the helm for Arizona State. It, it is super interesting to hear each week these coaches talk about Jaden Rashada. Yeah. It's the first week that a, a coach hasn't compared Rashada to an NFL quarterback. <laughs> Uh, so let's go ahead and see what Tedford had to say about Jaden Rashad. He does a nice job. You know, he's he can hurt you with his legs. He's he's tall. He can 
he's got good speed, so when things break down, he can extend the play, um, which always causes trouble. Um, but then he can pull it down and run too, you know. So he's a he's a talented guy, and uh, accurate thrower. And so he's a, you know, for a freshman, he's he's really doing a nice job. It's very interesting to me. A like everyone recognizes like. He, it's funny how much people talk about his arm, even though you haven't seen him use it that much. Like, obviously, and obviously these coaches are scouting and stuff, blah blah blah. So like they know, but like, um, and then B, both he and Caleb brought up the the uh, Rashada speed, which is interesting to me because he doesn't run. Yeah, he doesn't run. He doesn't often. run like at all, and so it's it's interesting. And oh, like I'm curious if that is something they are going to game plan around defensively is if they really are concerned about his speed threat. Because if that is the, if that is the case. It's going to be very interesting to see if ASU is able to exploit that because it's not something that they actually really do. So if you're if you're planning for an ASU attack that doesn't really exist, then hopefully ASU is going to be able to to, to have their way offensively. And by no means do I think they're going to actually like have their way. I don't think they're going to just run all over this Fresno State team. That Fresno State team is very legit. Um, but if if you're sitting there worrying about containing the quarterback when the quarterback isn't going to run. Hopefully that gives them some other opportunities. Yeah, I, I, I'm be honest. I don't know how much you're going to see Jaden Rashada run on Saturday. Uh, yeah, I mean, just, again, you haven't seen him run up to this point, and if he ha- it's not been designed, that's for sure. Yeah. Hey, look, his arm is what makes him exactly. a threat. So we'll, we'll obviously see as it kind of goes along how this offense kind of adapts. Rashad's going to rush for 120 yards on Saturday. Yeah. I, I'll make you a bet right now, Sean. <laughs> I'm if, not going to take that one. No, <laughs> no, thank you. I'll make you a bet right now, buddy. Uh, but yeah, regardless, we, we've talked about the offense. We've talked about Arizona State, and, and we've heard it from the perspective of Tedford. But let's go ahead and, and see what Fresno State quarterback Mikey Keene has to say about the Arizona State defense. They do a lot of uh, unique things on third downs. Um, they have athletes all over the board on, in the in the defensive defensive back room. Uh, they got some linebackers that can move. Um, one of my buddies plays linebackers there, Tate Romney. He went to high school with me. So there's a couple guys from my high school that play on that team. They're on the offensive side as well. But a very athletic defense, very long and big defense. Uh, they can present, present some problems, um, run some unique stuff on third down. So just got to be in the film room this week and get ready for those guys. Just got to be in the film room and get ready for those guys. I can't wait for the broadcast on Saturday to mention his sneaky athleticism. No, no, no. Anywhere <laughs> from 80 to 90 million times that he's from Chandler mm. um, because – you get a homecoming for the quarterback, and the commentators don't know any other information about the game. They're just going to bring that up 80 million times. And um, he wasn't recruited by Arizona State. No, yeah. So it's going to be interesting. Like, there's 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 levels to this. Like, this isn't just a random non-conference game. It's obviously a homecoming for their quarterback, and maybe maybe he feels some kind of way about uh, not being recruited by ASU. Um, obviously, was a Central Florida guy that transferred to Fresno State. Um, and like he mentioned... It, this is, a, I mean, obviously with the whole Kenny, the, the activating the Valley, all that, keeping players here, like there's a lot of guys that he's familiar with that either, either played with or played against in high school yeah. on this team. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see how, it, it's basically how Keen handles playing in, playing home, playing at home for, I, I'm assuming, at least the first time since he, he graduated high school and, and being the enemy in that situation. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see how he specifically manages that. And he's probably going to have, Gonna be a lot of a lot of keen fans, fa- family, and, and friends in the crowd. Um, so it's gonna be a, a, a weird amount of pressure on him. I feel like. Well, I'm interested to just see the turnout uh, yeah. because I think the the student section has done just they a phenomenal job. job over but the first I will say weeks. this: I don't. If the rest of the fans don't keep doing their job, and ASU keeps losing games, like don't take that for granted. They're not gonna just keep showing up if they keep losing, and the townies, the, the you know the the non students don't show up. Yeah. It's going to be a unique situation. I think, again, this is really important for Arizona State going into conference play uh, to give the fans a reason to show up to Sun Devil Stadium uh, again. Regardless, Tedford was talking a little bit about uh, just Sun Devil Stadium or, I guess, Mountain America Stadium yeah. now in the environment, uh, which is interesting because we're around that environment a lot now. Yeah. This is what Tedford had to say about Sun Devil Stadium. It's a great environment, you know, it really is. They, the fans do a nice job there. It can be a very hostile environment. I played there, new. I mean, obviously many times when I was in the Pac-10, Pac-12, and um, they can really get it rolling, you know, and, uh, and great environment, great place to play. You know, if our fans go, you know, obviously there's a lot to do in that town. So, um, but yeah, we've, the, 
field is awesome. They always keep it up great. You know, it's a great facility. Uh, so um, it's an exciting place to play. He's real life Eeyore. He's, uh, it's been a while since he's been to Tempe, I feel like. You don't think he goes to Mill? Every no, because, I mean, he's talking about the pack. Like, I mean, let's, let's be honest about what this is. It is a good environment, but, like, you're not going to play in Tuscaloosa, dog. Like, it's, and it's also not, you know, ASU's, you know, the, the vibes around ASU football are not what they were when you were coaching them in the Pac-10, coaching, playing against them in the Pac-10, whatever. So, like, Tedford just puts me to bed. He does kind of put me to bed a little bit, is, you know, but, um, yeah, man, I mean, I don't know. They might be a little, maybe they'll be a little thrown off by, I don't know. I, I just, it'll be really interesting to hear them talk about the, the atmosphere. The only thing you need to worry about here is the damn heat. I don't know. You know. Have you seen what it's supposed to be in the center? It's been nice out recently. Though. It has been real nice out recently. Let's go ahead and check. I'll I could look. Uh, in the meantime, Stephon Diggs said that he could be a top five cornerback in the NFL. Stop it. And the, the, his reason, but I will say his reason for it is he's because I see my little brother do it, and I'm like, ah, your little brother <laughs> could do something. You could do it. I mean, <laughs> that's so different. But I, I know. I know. I'm, I'm joking. That's obviously insane. Um, but While the, you look up the weather, I'm going to go ahead and tell everybody uh, where they should go ahead and get their breakfast on Saturday before I'm the so game, right and now. that is Burrito Express. The burrito Express Burrito sounds like it would be. Dude, so I, I swear good. to God, I was thinking about it earlier um, during the show. I would. Oh, it's going to be. Oh, it's going to be closed. Yeah, sorry, man. It's been sorry. too long since I've had a burrito. And I think we get Burrito Express next week. To be oh. honest with you, guys, Burrito Express. Hot, hotly is going to be in Australia. Ha ha. More for us. More for us. Guys, Burrito Express. Bummer for me. Yeah. Is fire. It's the best breakfast out there. It's the best best burritos in the galaxy. I don't know if you saw the aliens. Did you see the the Mexican officials were out like just showing um, like thousand year old alien remains or something? Did you see that? I did not. Yeah. No, that was an actual thing. I think the aliens are coming down here just to check out Burrito Express. Mm. They don't have burritos They're going to be like, like take that. me to your leader. We're going to take him to Angel. Yeah. That would be an introduction. Hey, that I, I would mean, watch. Angel is as out of this world. That <laughs> I'll would put be, it like that. They would get along. That would be pretty crazy, guys. <laughs> Go check out Burrito Express before the aliens get there. Uh, they got <laughs> locations all over the valley. Check them out and give them a follow on social at Burrito EXP. Uh, the weather for Saturday, looking at a high of 103, low of 75. Um, but it looking like, let's see here, about six o'clock, we're looking at mid 90s. Not so horrible. We got That's pretty cool. Have a pretty, pretty, I a pretty a nice game on. day. Yeah, pretty nice game day. Won't be sweating our ass off on the sideline before the game like we usually are. Um, but yeah, what what average did you just do? Who are you telling the people about? Burrito, uh, Express? Burrito Express. Yeah. Um, well, you'll have plenty of money for Burrito Express um, when you start, you know, Winning. taking my betting advice and just hammering, um, probably. Uh, hammering Syracuse football. I think that's my new. <laughs> that's the team I'm riding with now because it's definitely not the Buffalo Bills. Um, but regardless who you're betting on, if you're winning, uh, you're betting on the Bet MGM Sportsbook app um, because they're the best. All you got to do is you place your first Bet MGM Sportsbook wager through the Bet MGM Sportsbook mobile app of at least ten dollars. Not, not much. Though, uh, who's on the ten dollar bill? You're asking me a history question. Right the ten dollar founding father, yeah. Alexander, Alexander Hamilton. Hamilton. Come on, uh, Toe no. Tree. <laughs> you know uh, the last time that somebody asked me who was on. But he's uh, a ten dollar founding father without a father. Anyways, um, those uh, Nick <laughs> bet of at least ten dollars on the Ben MGO Sportsbook app. You're going to receive two hundred buckaroos. That's how many ten dollar bills? I don't want to do that math because um, they don't pay you in cash. It goes straight to your bank account. That's how, that's how they operate. Um, all you got to do: download the app. Visit BetMGM or visit BetMGM. Sign up with code PHNX. Deposit at least ten dollars in your newly created newly created account. Place a wager of at least ten dollars at standard odds price. Um, and once you have placed a qualifying bet, you will receive two hundred dollars in bonus bets, regardless of the outcome of your wager. Um, yeah, I'm in on Syracuse football. Only team in the country that has uh, top or one of two teams in the country, other one Oklahoma, as a top ten offense and top ten defense. They actually play Purdue who Fresno State played uh, to open their season. Uh, So hammer the Syracuse Orange. I would say hammer our football teams, but they apparently don't like winning. Um, My team's going to win this week. Yeah, mine is too. I don't know who we play, but there's no way they lose twice in a row, right? I think they play... You play some bums, I think. I think we do too. Who do the Bills play? Is it the Saints? 
I don't know. While I figure out who the Bills play, uh, Shane is gone, but his voice is forever. Listen to him give you the disclaimer. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Colorado, D.C., Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, New Jersey, Nevada, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Wyoming. Call 877-8-HOPE-N-Y or text hope Y 467-369-NEW YORK. Call 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts. 21 plus to wager. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF, Iowa. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help, Michigan. 1-800-981-0023, Puerto Rico, in partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. U.S. promotional offers not available in D.C., New York, or Ontario. Danny in the chat. I'm from Fresno, and we're watching at my brother's house. My brother is a Fresno State fan, and I'm an ASU fan. It is going to be <laughs> interesting. Gosh, that, that's, that is, uh, those are, like, I love those moments. When, especially in college, where, like, like last or two years ago when Syracuse played ASU in one of those basketball tournaments. And I'm like, there's no reason these teams should ever see each other. No. Um, but I... When they do, it's personal. When it's awesome. When you are when when you have like teams that collide that you should, for no reason, like the Bills playing the Chargers this year. Like yeah. there's no real reason. That, like I mean, obviously the NFL is different. There's less teams, but like... And, and outside of we that to, week, usually I'd have no other reason to care about the Bills. Yeah. Yeah. But no, but that week but I'm going to hate the Chargers. Yeah. Exactly. That yeah. week. Yeah. That week it's personal. Your brother is no longer your brother this week, and that's how it should be. That's why sports are awesome. Exactly. Sports are different. Sports mm-hmm. are different. Um, getting back Make to you hate to, the people you love. <laughs> to Fresno State uh, at ASU before we get out of here. We've talked about Mikey Keene, Eric Brooks, uh, Jalen Gill a little bit. Again, I think. When it comes down to it, this is going to be a game that Arizona State's offensive line is going to have to win. They are going to need to put aside the fact that there's a bunch of them dealing with injuries, and they're going to need to take care of a Fresno State defensive front that simply isn't very good, that can't get pressure. Uh, Jane Rashada is going to need to pick apart this Fresno State defense. Wow, I'm so nasally right now, bro. (laughs) Jeez. Um, Scadaboo to Carlos Brooks, Tevin White. I want to see Tevin White this week. Mm. Um I, I think you are going to get a Arizona State offense that is going to beat up on Fresno State. Yeah. Um, or at least I hope so, because if you don't get to that point, then it's like we talked about the other day. It becomes a pattern um, yeah. of this Arizona State team being incapable of doing a whole lot in the second half. And then yeah. fans start to be like, OK, what, what are we doing now? Yeah. And I mean, we talked about the student section earlier. Their whole reputation is them leaving in the second half. If you become a team whose reputation is sucking in the second half, fuck, I'd leave too. Yeah. I wouldn't actually because I'm not the kind of person I stay clean. But um, yeah, no, it is going to be interesting. I, it's just this team should be able to not, again, not have their way, but like they should be able to to, to assert themselves physically, um, I think. And it's going to be really interesting to see the Scadaboo package. I yeah. want to see them uh, just, you know, our guys versus your guys. I, I'm interested to see how they utilize that again. Um, but yeah, man, I no no disrespect to Fresno State, but like it, it's because they deserve a lot of it. I just I think ASU again. Th- th- this is not a game that they should win, but a game that they definitely can and they need to. Yeah, I think looking at some of the other games, right? You look at the Oklahoma State game, and we're like, okay, Arizona State, Oklahoma State, kind of mirror each other. We're yeah. like, okay, this is two similar teams. You look at Arizona State versus Southern Utah, you're like, okay. ASU should take care of business. When I look at this Fresno State matchup versus Arizona State, this just feels like this is a team in ASU that they just match up better with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I agree because, again, it's like I'm looking for ways that Fresno State beats ASU, and I don't really see one. I more see ASU beating themselves like they did last week and are not even beating themselves, just not doing anything to really win the game. Yeah. Like, it, it's it's... It's just it's a weird team, but um, no, yeah, it's you look at the matchups, you you look at all of the the weaknesses from this team that we've talked about already. Like there are specifically weaknesses that this team should be able to exploit. Yeah, um, and so hopefully they do. We'll see. But again, it, it, uh, to me, this comes down to ASU not beating themselves. Daniel brought it up in the chat. Maybe we'll talk about this more later in the week. But like, it's going to be really interesting to see how they uh, they approach some of the things that really. Like like the fort being aggressive on fourth down that that really ended up costing them in the last game. If they stay away from that, or if Kenny sticks to his guns, which I think is probably the more likely outcome. I think Kenny. I, I don't think the failures in one game are going to keep Kenny from being Kenny. Um, and I think what we saw for Kenny being aggressive is that that's Kenny. Um, but um, it's not disrespect. It's just like every team's got weaknesses and matchups. And I think like like we both said, I think ASU's. You know, we we talk about having a quarterback that has a great arm, and we're talking about a defense that has problems at safety. That's that's a matchup. We're talking about a team that the one bright spot from last year, week with ASU was their their front seven, their pass rush, BJ Green. 
against a team that, you know, where's the offensive line? Or, or offense, our offensive line being weak. Well, we're coming into a week where their defensive line is weak, so yeah. it shouldn't be as big of an issue. Like I, I like we both said, I think from a matchup perspective, ASU, it's a, it's a game that ASU can win. Um, it's going to be a challenge. It's not going to be easy. I think, you know, like we said, Fresno State was planning on being a top 25 team. They are a good team. They're probably better than ASU. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. ASU is going to be dogs for the first time this year. Like, it, it, or were they dogs against Oklahoma State? ASU? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so not for the first time this year. But um, I don't know. It's just going to be It's different. I, I, I get it. don't want to... Because I hate when... when like, I would hate to be on the show and be like, ASU is going to beat Alabama because it's ASU podcast. No, like, I, Fresno State is, is a good team. I don't oh, want yeah. to come off. And I don't, I don't look again. I don't, I know the situation is what it is. When I say Arizona State's going to beat Fresno State, when I say Arizona State's going to beat Oklahoma State, this is just like, if you've been listening to me through the, the summer and then fall camp, like, I picked ASU to go three and oh in, in non conference yeah. play. I'm sticking to my guns. I think they're a better team. I, or maybe not a better team, but I do think they match up better at certain positions, right? We talked to Caleb. He brings up the size of the wide receivers. Okay, you look at ASU's defensive backs. You look at guys uh, like Shamari, like Rowe, like even Jordan Clark. These are guys that are bigger. Chris Edmonds, they're yeah. much bigger oh, than the wide receivers than, yeah. that Fresno State has. You, you look at the, the Fresno State offensive line, they tend to commit holding penalties. Well, that bodes well for an ASU pass rush and B.J. Green and specifically Clayton Smith, who are much yeah. faster off the edge, and then you bring it up, same thing that Caleb brought up, right? A big Fresno State weakness uh, is some of their defensive backs, specifically at safety, and you look at A, the arm talent that Jaden Rashada has, and B, the speed, speed yeah. that ASU has uh, on the perimeter. It's just a recipe for success. Yeah. Now we'll see. You've got the recipe. Can you Let's cook, see though? if Let's you cook. can Let's cook. cook. <laughs> Chef Kenny. Um, yeah, I, I, the one thing you just brought up that I wanted to mention that I forgot about is like our secondary. He, he, Caleb mentioned um, Keens. You know, like I said, sometimes he, he's a second late on things. He leaves a little air on, under the ball. Like our secondary has not been great, but they're big. They're big. This is an opportunity for them to step up. I think they'll have. You mentioned takeaways earlier. Like I think you'll see instances where the the, the secondary is going to have opportunities to make big plays in that regard. Um, and they need to this week because I think it would be really good for this team to have a, a, like a, just a dominant showing from the secondary. Um, I think it'd be good to kind of set the tone for the rest of the year. Yeah, I mean, it'd be great to even set the tone before you get into conference play exactly. and your first matchup is against one of the best quarterbacks, if not the best quarterback in college football yeah. with Caleb Williams. Yeah, but also, that's why the offense really needs to get humming because, like, the USC defense is not great. Um, and so, if obviously, by no means do I think they're going to really even compete against USC, but obviously you're going with into every week looking to compete, if you want to compete, it's going to be by scoring points. Um, yeah. It's not going to be by this defense slowing down that offense. That's a that's a recipe for disaster if that's how you plan on winning that game. Um, so the offense, I mean, everyone needs to get humming. Carlson needs to kick no, further right. than 40 yards. You're like, right. everyone needs to get start doing their jobs. Look, we, we, we talk about, you know, if Jaden, if Arizona State, Kenny, Bo, if they can cook this week offensively, we hope so. But, you know, who does cook every single day, guys? That is illegal, Pete. They sure as hell know what they're doing over at their Tempe and Tucson locations. Go check them out. The weather is finally, I'm not going to say getting cool, but, but it is We got multiple off. people wearing long sleeves today. That is fair. But in this office, people are always wearing long sleeves. Or but hoodies. I'm not. I usually, I, this is because it's nicer today. That's fair. That's fair. Guys, go check out. Illegal Pete's, whether it be for their tacos, uh, their margs, for really all of the amazing food that they have mm. over at Illegal Pete's. Also, shout so out Illegal Pete's for feeding us this Stop. week. It's so damn good. Stop I, know, I know you're hungry, man. I know you're hungry, guys. There's it's, leftovers in the fridge, Sean, for say, after go, the show. Okay, we'll stop bringing it up until the show's some over. Some stop pizza. torturing me. I don't, have a, I, 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 I don't know what to tell you. This is my job right now. Guys, Illegal <sighs> Pete's is your go-to spot this summer. Um, and really for the fall as well. Stop by for happy hour, 3 p.m. through 8 p.m. every day at all 12 locations. Illegal Pizza go-to spot for burritos, buddies, and beer for 28 mm, years. 28 years. 28. Longer than I've been alive. That's a lot. You said that's a lot? That's a lot. You call me old? You're not as old as me. It's true. We spent like a whole segment yesterday kind of calling Derek old on... on d How D-backs? old is he? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, then how the fuck... I mean, it's, we weren't talking about it. I, it was just like one of those things where it's like, ah, this happened. And first off, first off, I got to bring this up because it rocked my world. You know, Stat Lackey Reese from The Rising Show? You see him hanging out in the office sometimes? The, yes. He was born six months after the release of 
High School Musical. Does that not make you want to jump out of the window? It's pretty crazy. Isn't that the worst thing you've ever... Damon and I went through it because that was, that was like the first time in my life where I have interacted with like a grown human being. Like he drove here and he was not alive for something that I vividly remember. Like I remember Disney Channel having the countdown to the premiere and sitting by my TV and to, for when that clock hit zero and then they were singing karaoke. Like I remember that. Yeah, I remember it. And he wasn't born. He wasn't born. Does that not rock your world? It doesn't not rock. It just makes me sick. Yeah. I was disturbing. It was disturbing. You know what else makes me sick? Hmm. How, the, how fucking awesome the merch from Foco is. There it is. There it is. It's unbelievable. Um, limited edition. They got the... Listen, I'm a collector at heart. I collected cars growing up, collected baseballs, and I collected bobbleheads. I wish I had known about Foco when I was a kid because I would have... Uh, I was going to say emptied my bank account, but I was a kid. I didn't have money. You I would have emptied bank? my mom's bank account um, for bobbleheads, especially because they're limited edition. So there's nothing, you know, it's cool having stuff. But when you're a kid and you have something that no one else has, you're like, fuck you guys. Show and tell. I'm cooler than you. Um, you could be like that with FOCO, especially when you use our discount code PHNX. Um, all you got to do, head to FOCO.com, use our code PHNX, and you'll get 10% off all non pre sale items um, when you use that code PHNX. So check them out. FOCO. They're, they're the best. They always have our back for Arizona sports, and they have yours too. Absolutely. Guys, that is going to do it for our Wednesday show. We appreciate everybody hopping on with us today. Go ahead and leave a like for Mr. Bobby Hurley so himself, and we will see you guys you. live at 2 uh, p.m. on Thursday, Sunival 1982. I mean, that's the mantra. Just scheme motherfuckers open. That's all I want. That's all we want. Scheme we are open. with you. Sign level 1982. Specifically, if you could scheme motherfuckers open for the first and second half, that'd be yeah. that'd be real cool. Um, guys, if you enjoyed the content, or if you didn't, or if you're in between, regardless, give us a follow at PHNX underscore Sign up. You can be follow me something new. at Anthony underscore Totri. You can follow this man right here at Sean underscore to pause. Uh, the $10, $10 founding father without a father, as always. Dear God. <laughs> we will see you Thursday at 2 p.m. But for now, peace. Thank you.